And the Torch of Light kicks off today in Wasilla. It's a two-year campaign where students will pass the torch from Alaska all the way to Argentina to raise awareness about how you can save a life. Literally, I was in a hospital bed in Toronto, in a Toronto hospital, and I already made my funeral arrangements, like most other people waiting. And with hours left, literally, uh, a call came in that a liver was available. After getting a second chance at life, George Marcel says he wants to say thank you by raising awareness about being a tissue and organ donor in an interesting way. He's leading a student torch campaign where close, where close to 300 cities are going to take part in carrying this torch. Today, Anchorage Mayor Dan Sullivan joined others in an opening ceremony to help inspire everybody in each of their communities to be a tissue and organ donor. The opportunity to help other people, in this case, one donor may help up to 50 people through organ and tissue transplant, and in George's case, can save a life through an organ transplant. For more information on how to be a tissue and organ donor, log on our website at ktva.com. Stick around, CBS Love News. Anyone who's driving that vehicle? Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, now watch this. <laughs> this thing. Everybody on board there, then it'll be out of easier to. Oh, yeah. There it comes. There is a movement underway in this province to overhaul BC's organ donation program and possibly save lives in the process. Deb has more on what's known as presumed consent. News Hour Insight. Deb. Yes, Chris. Right now, there are more than 300 British Columbians on the waiting list for an organ transplant. And the sad truth about this is, and it, it's brutal, many of them will die while they're waiting. That's because while the majority of us support this idea when it comes down to actual donors, the numbers are low. In an effort to combat the shortage and save more lives, one woman with a very personal connection to this issue is calling on politicians to change the current opt-in donor model to one of opt-out. Marissa Thomas explains. If courage has a face, it would look like this. Cheryl Nilsson walks the sun run just 12 months after a double lung transplant. A transplant she had to move to Toronto for because of a shortage of organs in BC. April 22nd, she got her call, got her double lung. <clears throat> it worked. And thank God for donors because through the generosity of somebody else, their loss, which we feel every day, my daughter was able to survive and live and had lived life to the fullest. And in five minutes, we'll be prepared to uh, run with the torch. A lack of organ donors is something George Marcello knows all too well. He received a liver transplant and has now embarked on a two-year torch relay across North and South America to get people to sign up to be donors. While events like this help raise awareness, still only 17% of British Columbians are organ donors. Cheryl's mom wants to see something called presumed consent, which means everyone would be considered an organ donor unless they opt out. I think that would be wonderful, that everybody should be on the registry. If you don't want to be on it, phone, go on the internet, do whatever you have to do, and say, no, I don't want to. But I think majority of people will, will want to Absolutely. be on it. And they don't really realize that they are not an order, or organ donor. Presumed consent, or the opt-out system, is law in many European countries, including Spain, which leads the world in organ donation. The opt-out rate is around 2%. Still, it's not something that BC Transplant supports. You know, British Columbia has a first-person consent registry, which means that we want to respect the decision of an individual. The rest of the country can't even come to grips with, with that reality. I can't see how the country can move from thinking that it's the decision of a family to actually going to presume consent. Having this in place, uh, the family does have that discussion, and when the time happens that the uh, you know a family member dies, that family is more aware about the donation process. And right now, what's happening is there's too much shock, and when the family is approached, uh, they're not able to say yes. It's a debate Cheryl would have wanted. Sadly, she passed away one month ago. Her lungs were healthy, but she died of a rare infection.
for Kootenai West. Arriving <coughs> in the legislature later today, SOS The Americas is a campaign of over a thousand students who will relay the torch of life throughout 36 countries in the Americas, promoting the importance of organ and tissue donations. This is a two-year journey that started in Alaska on October 24th of this year and will end in Argentina on October 24th, 2011. The Odyssey is sponsored by Step by Step, a charitable organization created by George Marcello in 1997. George, a recipient of a life-saving liver transplant himself, has spearheaded this journey in many other countries, with this being his seventh campaign. Students from Victoria High with George will be arriving at the legislature at approximately 3 o'clock carrying the famous torch of life. Victoria is the third city of 277 cities to be visited in the two-year student torch trek. I encourage all members of the House to join me now and outside at 3 o'clock in welcoming these young people and the torch to the legislature today. They are taking part in a global campaign to promote organ donation. Students from 277 cities are being recruited to carry the torch of life in an effort to inspire people to become organ and tissue donors. The 36-day campaign started in Alaska and will pass through 36 countries. Organizers say the message is too important to ignore. In Canada, every other day, somebody is dying, waiting for an organ transplant. It's not arriving. We have the potential to save every one of the over 4,000 Canadians that are presently waiting if we can encourage, inspire every person in Canada to become an organ donor. The Torch of Life has been blessed by the Pope and will be crossing paths with many governors, senators, even U.S. President Barack Obama. If you have some good news you'd like to share, leave us a voicemail at 780-989-4761 or send us an email to feedbackedmonton at globaltv.com. Good news is brought to you. There's going to be thousands and thousands of lives that are going to be uh, saved. That's really the bottom line. You can become a donor simply by signing the back of your Alberta health care card, and you can track the torch's progress online. Just go to our website, ctvedmission.ca, click on news links, and you'll get a link. Stephen Mandel and students from St. Albert help light the torch of life. It is day 20 of a 700-day campaign. A relay will run through 277 cities in 36 countries. Thousands are carrying the torch to encourage people around the world to sign donor cards and potentially save millions of lives. A global campaign to promote organ donation passed through our city today. Students from 277 cities are carrying the torch of life. The 36-day campaign started in Alaska and will pass through 36 countries before finishing in Argentina. Organizers say someone in Canada dies every second day while waiting for an organ. We have the potential to save every one of the over 4,000 Canadians that are presently waiting if we can encourage, inspire every person in Canada to become an organ donor. The Torch of Life has been blessed by the Pope and will be crossing paths with many leaders, including U.S. President Barack Obama. Once it was lit in the Regina Good. High School gym, students took to the streets. These Regina students are among thousands of others in a 36-country relay. They're carrying the torch, hoping to get more people to sign up as potential organ donors. Brad Lulick led this leg of the run. 4,000 people in Canada right now need an organ donation, and we're, it's proven that we are the lowest, we have the lowest number of don donors in the world. That's why George Marcello mortgaged his house to fund this student torch run. He's had two liver transplants and was moved by what he saw waiting for his transplants. Uh, this was in a Toronto hospital. Every other day, somebody on my floor was dying because an organ wasn't arriving. Three floors below me was the emergency room uh, where literally uh, 
nurses were telling us that there was organs that were going literally in the wastebasket. Marcello hopes this worldwide student run will inspire more people to sign an organ donor card and discuss their wish with a family member. The student run ended at the Saskatchewan legislature with the premier accepting the torch. Brad Wall was asked why Canada and Saskatchewan have a low rate of organ donors. I don't know because you know we have we're the number one in the country in terms of volunteering. I I can't think of a province in Canada that has a bigger heart than our than ours, and so uh, that we would want to give ours away if uh, in the in the case of some calamity seems to fill. It might just be awareness, and so. Hats off to these kids from Regina High School. One person could save eight people's lives. Why are so many organs going to waste? Marcello says he doesn't believe Saskatchewan people are reluctant to sign an organ donor card. He says they just need to be reminded of it. He hopes this run will do that. <laughs> Dean Gutile, CBC News, Regina. Former Prime Minister Paul Martin is in Regina. Hundreds of thousands of lives came to Regina today. Students from Regina high schools carried the torch of life to the steps of the legislature this morning. The torch is being carried across North and South America to raise awareness of the importance of organ donation. Those carrying the torch say it's an issue that needs to be talked about more in Canada. 4,000 people in Canada right now need organ donation and we're, it's proven that we are the lowest we have the lowest number of don donors in the world. From Alaska to Argentina, the Torch of Life is traveling to 277 cities in 36 countries throughout the Americas. Most of A torch traveling around the world made a stop in Regina today, and no, it is not for the Olympics. Students from the four Regina Catholic schools delivered the Torch of a Life to Premier Bradwall at the Saskatchewan Legislative Building. The torch run is to promote the importance of organ and tissue donations. It is currently on a two-year relay from Alaska to Argentina and will visit 277 cities along the way. It has even been blessed by the Pope. In Saskatchewan, the students recognize there is a real need for organ donors. It's, it's amazing how many people, 4,000 people in Canada right now need organ donation and we're, it's proven that we are the lowest, we have the lowest number of don donors in the world. The torch will be in Brandon, Manitoba tomorrow and it will end the Canadian leg of its journey at the end of January. Does the appear in court? Well, while the Olympic torch is still on the East Coast, the Torch of Life made a stop in Winnipeg today. The campaign called SOS the Americas, uh, addressing the chronic shortage of organ and tissue donations around the world. The torch was carried from Earls on Main to the Manitoba Legislature. Torch bearers from 277 cities and 36 countries are being recruited to carry and relay the torch. It's all in an effort to inspire millions of people to become organ and tissue donors. The two-year campaign is being featured daily on a webcast. There's also a link on our website, ctdwinnipeg.ca. Well, that brings us to our web poll question tonight. Have you signed an organ donor card? You can log on to our website once again, ctdwinnipeg.ca. Up next, a breakthrough in the fight against multiple sclerosis. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, that was great. I'm, I'm going to call you afterwards. A brother of Thunder Bay High School students helped to inspire people to donate their organs today by taking part in an international torch relay. We donate your organs! Of St. Patrick's High School carried the torch to City Hall today. SOS The Americas is organizing the relay, which is covering about 300 cities in 36 countries of the Americas, to raise awareness about organ and tissue donation. Grade 12 student Brittany Marshall wanted to take part in the effort because the issue was close to home for her. Just for myself, it's sort of a personal motivation. Um, my dad's best friend, he's been struggling with juvenile diabetes his whole life. And he's also a double amputee. And he's waiting for a kidney and pancreas for over two years now. So just to uh, take that walk and uh, step for him. The cure is in the message. Uh, if we can get people inspired about becoming organ donors, we can solve this problem. There's presently over 4,000 Canadians that are waiting for these precious gifts. The relay began in Alaska on October 23rd, and Marcello says they plan to finish in Argentina in October of 2011. The
Torch's next stop is full of rather of Thunder Bay High School students help to inspire people to donate their organs today by taking part in an international torch relay. Students of St. Patrick's High School carried the torch to City Hall today. SOS The Americas is organizing the relay, which is covering about 300 cities in 36 countries of the Americas, to raise awareness about organ and tissue donation. Grade 12 student Brittany Marshall wanted to take part in the effort because the issue is close to home for her. Just for myself, it's sort of a personal motivation. Uh, my dad's best friend, he's been struggling with juvenile diabetes his whole life, and he's also a double amputee, and he's waiting for a kidney and pancreas for over two years now. So just to uh, take that walk and uh, step for him. The cure is in the message. Uh, if we can get people inspired about becoming organ donors, we can solve this problem. There's presently over 4,000 Canadians that are waiting for these precious gifts. The relay began in Alaska on October 23rd, and Marcello says they plan to finish in Argentina in October of 2011. The torch's next stop is Sault Ste. Marie. Santa Claus arrived early in Thunder Bay. A Sudbury Thursday as part of its close to 300 city journey across 36 countries in North and South America. The purpose of the Torch of Life Relay is to raise awareness of the need for organ and tissue donations. Lively District Secondary School students Keely Murka and Victor Hopper carried the torch through part of Lively and again near Tom Davies Square. Keely, uh, you're one of the torch runners today for this Torch of Life run. Um, why is this important for you to be part of this? Uh, it's really important to me because my grandfather over a year ago had a kidney transplant that now he can live a normal life and he doesn't have to dialysis anymore so it really made a difference for me and my family and stuff. so I'm glad to run for the torch today. Victor, you're the other torch runner today with the Torch of Life Relay. Why do you want to be part of this? I was asked to do it uh, by a teacher and I thought it was a great cause to get involved in that and raise awareness for this organ donation. Um, I don't have any connections but I do and thought it would be good to represent it. 2007-2008 secondary school student who died nine months ago. His organs and tissues were donated. George Marcello, who's one of the organizers of today's run, explains why the event is so important. It's very important. Every day somebody's dying because our uh, organs not arriving. If we can get this kind of enthusiasm, if we can get this kind of enthusiasm, we can save everybody on the waiting list. Nobody needs to die. And what these kids are doing here today is literally saving lives. And that's what this is all about. The journey began in Alaska in October. The torch will visit 277 cities and 26 countries. It's expected to end in Argentina in 2011. Stephen Harper getting a score. The torch of life was burning in Toronto. Dozens of students from several GTA high schools ran with a torch that has been blessed by Pope John Paul II to raise awareness of organ donation. The torch has been traveling throughout the Americas and will visit 277 cities and 26 countries. Organizer George Marcello received an organ transplant in 1995 he had been given just a few days to live when his life was saved. And all the other students, I want to welcome you. Thank you. The students in Toronto were met at Queen's Park by MPP Frank Cleese, who congratulated them on behalf of all political parties and the Ontario government. The students say more people need to be open to organ donation to save more lives. For Sun Media, I'm Brett Clark. This is CBC News, Montreal at 6.
Now for a story that is definitely going to make you smile. It's the story of a little girl and a gift she received that literally saved her life. Now she wants to inspire others. The CBC's Joanne Vrakis met Zoe Bernard today. Hey, ça va bien aujourd'hui, Zoe? She's doing just good, just fine, yes. She's a little shy today. Oh, yeah, she is. Today was a big one for this little girl. The four-year-old is only a bit bigger than the torch she was carrying to City Hall. Last year, the tiny Montrealer received the gift of life, a heart from an organ donor. It was a real miracle for her parents. It's just terrible. You see her child just going away. She was she was going the last 48 hours before she got her heart. She we didn't know if she was make, going to make it, and uh, it was a miracle that she had her heart at that moment. Zoe's heart came to her in part through the hard work of the group SOS the Americas. For a seventh time now, the group is carrying a torch through North and South America to raise awareness on organ and tissue donations. For this family, the memory of receiving the gift of a new heart is still very fresh. Everything stops, the world stops turning, nothing else exists. We both started crying. After that, the feeling is like a, a new birth for Zoe. Katia Habra was one of the students who carried the torch for Zoe last year. It's uh, really important because what, I mean, once you're dead, you're, you're dead, you're, you, you had the chance to live and you, you had the chance to do what you had to do, but what is the point of, you know, not giving that chance to someone else who might need it? For this man, Zoe is the perfect spokesperson for the cause. Today, what better spokesperson than to have Zoe Bernard carry the torch? And we're also going to inspire everybody in Montreal and possibly Quebec to sign that organ donor card. For the Bernard family, the issue of organ and tissue donation is one that crosses cultural, ethnic, and religious lines because it can, in fact, affect all of us. They want to remind everybody that the donations that come from one person alone can save up to eight lives, lives like that of little Zoe's. Joanne Brackus, CBC News, Montreal. Well, if you're an Alouettes fan, you will love... Yeah, Katia, can too? you come in for Est-ce que je peux prendre the... Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, she's coming in, yeah. I'm going in? Yeah. Yeah, okay. with me. I need. Yes, of course, of course. Okay. No. <laughs> Bernard is a four-year-old heart transplant recipient. Today, she had the honor of carrying the torch of life to Montreal City Hall. This year's version of the torch of life relay began in Alaska last October, and the torch is making its way through the Americas all the way to Argentina. The aim of this relay to raise awareness of the critical need for organ donations. Zoe is the organization's youngest torchbearer ever. She's here in studio with her parents, Catherine and Marco. Hi to both of you. Hello. And we can hear um, Zoe's voice. Zoe, Zoe, put me dire bonjour. <laughs> no? <laughs> I have to say Zoe was full of talk a few minutes ago. <laughs> as we were listening to, as you were listening to the news, I was talking to Zoe. Hey, est-ce que t'as apporté ton petit uh, bouton? What's his name? Pee Wee. His name is Pee Wee. What does he say? What does he say? Ba Ba. I think that may be all we're going to hear from Zoe. <laughs> Zoe, but uh, she is uh, just. Oh, there we go. There's a Ba. Okay, you have to translate for us, Marco. Well, she's wondering what everything is. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a few bangs because uh, Zoe's very interested in our microphone. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to Catherine for a second because Catherine, Marco is holding Zoe in his lap and you're holding the torch. Yes. Tell us about tell us about this day. Uh, well, today. Um, it start, all started two years ago when someone was carrying the torch while Zoe was waiting for her heart. And um, she, the torch visited her at the hospital. And uh, she had her heart a few months after that. And this, uh, today was her day of carrying the torch uh, to uh, City Hall. And I'm looking at the torch and it's just about as big as she is. <laughs> yes. so how, Marco, how did, you how, how did you manage? Well, I... I kind of uh, helped her uh, a little. I was carrying Zoe, and uh, Zoe was carrying the torch, and I was uh, helping her to uh, to carry it. But it uh, it went just great, splendidly well. Yes, and it kept you warm. Oh yes, it did. <laughs> she was asking us a few minutes ago why we had the torch when we, it wasn't lit. 
but we had to tell her inside the inside the building we can't light it. Exactly. This is a, a really special torch too, from the very first days of this the torch of life relay. Yeah. I understand. Can you tell us about that, Catherine? Yes. Well, it was um, blessed. Blessed. Thank you yeah. uh, by uh, Pope Jean Paul II, and uh, he said uh, that uh, that it would. Um, can you remind me, Marco? I think it was in 2001. Yes, so I think so. Went before, yes, yeah, so the, the, the previous pope, who's, who's, uh, who, who blessed it apparently hoping it would be passed on to young people. To so, youth, yes, exactly. So, so what an amazing, uh, so what an amazing thing that she is the youngest ever. And we, you have to tell us, you, we know she's had a, a new heart, because yes. uh, you've told us that. Uh, who wants to tell us a little about her story? Um, <laughs> Zoe uh, was born in perfect health, she seemed in perfect health, uh, and uh, two months, she was ex exactly two months when uh, weird signs uh, started to show. She, uh, between two and four months, she didn't gain weight anymore, she was vomiting, she was crying all the time, she didn't seem comfortable. So then uh, a few months after, she was diagnosed with uh, cardiomyopathy, and we were told she could be either better or it could go worse. And it went, she was stable for a few years. And at two, they told us uh, that uh, she had to go through a surgery where we, they would put a um, pacemaker mm -hmm. to help her heart right. pump better. And it did not work. So she was put on a transplant uh, waiting list. And how old was she then? She was two. She was two. Yes, yeah, so that uh, whole six months, uh, we were pretty much in the hospital. We had to put her asleep at once because with the breathing machine because um, her heart would, would not be sufficient uh, to uh, to do all the, the, the work it has to do <laughs> yeah so she she waited uh, she six waited six months. months yes and it is kind of always a bit of a heartbreaking story for someone right when, mm -hmm. but a wonderful story for someone else what what, what do you know about her uh, her donor do you know anything at all we do not know anything we know it comes from the United States and it was ac exactly during the finals of hockey uh, between Canada and Philadelphia and it came from Philadelphia <laughs> so and it was that uh, a day of a playoff <laughs> Catherine, how did it feel to watch uh, your daughter and your husband carry that torch today? Oh, so proud, because now we're living happy moments. Zoe is happy, she's joyful, she, she's just as, as a little four-year-old should be. She's still with us, um, and seeing her today with her nice smile, and she was so proud of carrying the torch, and uh, she felt herself that she was carrying it for all those sick people who, who need new organs. And she even said to us, away from the cameras, <laughs> that uh, the flame would help sick people, and she wanted to give hearts to sick people. <laughs> uh, you know what? Zoe is wearing a little blue heart around her waist. She was. She showed it to me earlier, and she showed me her scar. She's very sophisticated in her knowledge about what she's been through. Very much. We have uh, two and a half year old twins that, uh, uh, sh and at two, she she knew so much more than uh, than they know now. She knew where her heart was. She knew that it was broken. That we had to change it, and she's very aware. I would say she 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 knows. Uh, a lot about her health. <laughs> oh, yeah. How how has participating in this uh, this torch of life? How has it sort of? It, how how would you say it's um, affected the recovery process, if you like? Why why was it so important for you to participate in this? We feel that uh, Zoe has received the biggest gift uh, anyone could ever receive, and uh, we have as a mission um, to uh, to talk about it because that's the way we have more people signing uh, the Carte de France Maladie. Their donor, um, uh, their, donor uh, sig their signature exactly. on the back of their Medicare So we cards. need to have people sign, have people talk about it, and if people are wondering where they can get the little sticker to sign behind, um, we can, uh, there's a Quebec Transplant, uh, it's called signedon.ca, uh, signé uh, ends with E-Z, D-O-N.ca. And uh, in English, uh, the, the, the name of the Sign. site? Sign for Life. Sign, Sign for Life. Sign for Life. Yes, and yeah. you can order stickers and you'll receive stickers by the mail. Do you know, uh, Marco, where the, when the, where the torch goes from here? I guess it goes back to... Um, in the east. Uh, uh, to Eastern Canada? Yeah. Yes, and, it is. And in the States. Okay. 
and then and the then. state starting February. I do know, if you want more information, you can go to the website, sosamericas.com, because that torch would like to make its way all the way down to Buenos Aires in Argentina by 2011. Thank you so much to all three of you for coming in. Zoe Bernard, thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Zoe. And Marco and Catherine, her parents. And it's 22 after 4. Let's rush back over to Jesse Connell, have a look at the latest traffic. Sorry, you asked a question to Marco, but I was, I was <laughs> doing the relay of the information. I'm just taking, her, taking care of her. I'm like not yes, listening. Yes, focusing. No, no, she comes to the kid. Christmas, a Bromal family is promoting the gift of life. Two years ago, four-year-old Zoe Bernard was on a waiting list for a new heart. Well, now her family is appealing to the public to make a simple gesture to save a life. I need to reports. This is what Zoe's parents used to dream of, carefree moments with a healthy daughter. She's having her second chance now and she's happy. At two months she was showing signs of illness, at two years she was waiting for a new heart. Like every morning you wake up and the nightmare is still there. Uh, you, know, you don't know what the day is going to be and every moment you wish someone tells you, the heart is here, we have a heart. The heart finally came in April of 2008 from a young donor in Philadelphia. Today, four-year-old Zoe is well enough to take part in the step-by-step -step campaign, a torch relay across North and South America to raise awareness about organ donations. This student joined the relay after hearing about Zoe. We felt proud to know that she was she was all right in the end, and I'm really happy to meet her today. Zoe is one of the lucky ones. More than 4,000 Canadians are still waiting, counting on others to sign their donor cards. This has to be the, the most important plea to our country, is because there's organs going to waste every day. Hundreds of organs are going to waste every day. We have to reach people with this. <laughs> It saved Zoe's life. Now her family hopes her story can convince others. But she is so happy. She's smiling. She's playing. She's a, she's a happy little girl. Ready to celebrate her fourth Christmas and many more. Annie DeMelt, CTV News. There's a special ceremony outside City Hall today. Four-year-old Zoe Bernard received the torch of life as it made a stop in Montreal. The torch is traveling through the Americas, promoting the importance of organ donations. Zoe and her parents know something about that. Zoe received a new heart about one year ago and is now happy and healthy. For Zoe's parents, promoting organ donation is part of their mission as they cherish every day with their healthy daughter. It's a challenge, but uh, coming out from it, I think now we can find every little positive thing in any situation. But yes, it is... Uh, it is difficult to stay positive, but you try and dig and find something good. But you know, when you see uh, when you see Zoe, uh, the, only kid, the only thing that they want to do is live. They're so strong. They're giving you a, a, a lesson of, of life. And you don't have choice. You have to fight. Because when you see them going, it's, you have no other... Uh, nothing else to do. You have and to you fight with them. Of Life makes its way through Buffalo today as part of its tour through 36 countries promoting organ and tissue donation. More than one half, un, excuse me, more than 100,000 Americans right now are waiting for an organ transplant. Today, Toronto police officers passed the torch to Buffalo police officers at the peace. for a good cause cross the border into Buffalo. Toronto police officers passed the torch of life to their Queen City counterparts at the Peace Bridge. Students ran from Alaska through Canada to promote the cause of organ donation, and now that run continues through the U.S. and points to the South. Every hour somebody's passing away because these organs aren't arriving. There's over 100,000 Americans that are waiting. We can change this. Now that torch run will continue through 160 U.S. cities over the next several months. A very long walk for a good cause crossed the border into Buffalo. Toronto police officers passed the torch of life to their Queen City counterparts at the Peace Bridge. 
Students ran from Alaska through Canada to promote the cause of organ donation, and now that run continues through the U.S. and points to the South. Every hour somebody's passing away because these organs aren't arriving. There's over 100,000 Americans that are waiting. We can change this. Now that torch run will continue through 160 U.S. cities over the next several months. Life makes its way through Buffalo today as part of its tour through 36 countries, promoting organ and tissue donation. More than one half, un, excuse me, more than 100,000 Americans right now are waiting for an organ transplant. Today, Toronto police officers passed the torch to Buffalo police officers at the peace. Students from across the globe are on a mission of hope, and today that mission made a stop right here in Western New York. News Force Jackie Walker is here with more. Jackie. So right, Lisa, the Torch of Life is making a two-year journey from Alaska to Argentina to promote the cause of organ and tissue donations. This morning, the Torch passed through Buffalo. Canisius High School students carried the Torch from City Hall to their school on Delaware Avenue. The Torch of Life was originally brought to the Pope by liver transplant recipient George Marcello to promote the cause. But Buffalo is now one of 300 cities where the Torch will stop. The students are working together with Upstate New York Transplant Services. Their education coordinator keeps the cause of organ donation close to her own heart. I'm also the mom of Lexis, who received a heart almost six years ago. So without you know, people raising awareness about this issue, you know, my daughter may not have received her heart, because you never know when it's going to be part of your life. There's over 100,000 people in the United States that are currently in need of some type of transplant, and it's something that anyone can give. It's a gift that they can give back. Um, so we just kind of joined together to help raise awareness. And Connor is part of the Donate Life Club at Canisius. On special days, the students wear green ties to school as another way to support awareness of organ and tissue donation. Lisa. All right, thank you, Jackie. Boy, Quinn Matthews, who desperately needs a heart transplant and is presently waiting in a uh, New York City uh, hospital. The torch, which was blessed by Pope John Paul II, was carried from City Hall to Canisius High School by students from the school. At the end of its 732-day journey, they will have visited 300 cities in 36 countries. Hundreds of people are on a mission to raise awareness about organ and tissue donation, and today they stopped in Rochester with an organization called Step by Step, and this group is on day 125 of a 732-day campaign. They're going to 300 cities around the world walking with a torch through each one, and they have one simple mission, getting people to sign up to be organ donors. We have to have Americans think, what if these were your children, you know, or your loved ones? How, how far would you go to try and save their life? Everybody really needs to start thinking like that. The campaign started in Alaska in October. It will end in Argentina in October of... When it's all said and done, this torch will have traveled through 160 cities in the United States and 36 countries. It started in Wasilla, Alaska, October 23rd, 2009. And we just finished wrapping up the Canadian leg, and on Saturday we entered Buffalo. Monday, the Torch of Life was in Bangor. Its mission? To promote awareness and urge more people to get involved with organ donation. Members of the Bangor High School track team lit the torch in Pickering Square and prepared to carry it across the city. I think it's a great honor because it's for a very good cause, and it's come across the whole country. Well, it's going to be going across all the Americas and stuff, and I think that for it to come to Bangor and we get to walk it, it's... Pretty cool. Despite frigid temperatures, the students were ready to go. Well, I knew walking up from the student parking lot this morning, it was going to be really cold out, so I grabbed my jacket and put my sweatshirt on over it, got everything I could out. The torches tour of Bangor headed down Broadway and came to an end at Bangor High School. Uh, I think it was a great thing to do. No, it was cold, but it was fun. And uh, it's a good thing to get all the community out there and show what we can do. The heart that these students showed uh, keeps me going, and I hope it's going to be able to inspire the uh, rest of the community. And as we're going from city to city through 160 cities in the United States, uh, we're hoping that we can see a dramatic increase in the rate of organ donations. Next stop, Augusta on Tuesday.
Rob Poindexter, WABI TV 5 News, Bangor. Thanks for joining us. Here's a look at what's going on in the world of health. Students from Dover and Caesar Rodney High Schools marched through downtown Dover today. It was all part of the torch track aimed at raising awareness for organ donation. They started at TGIF and walked with a police escort all the way to City Hall. And that's where they handed the torch off to the mayor. And today was also to raise awareness for a ninth grader in Pittsburgh, Jamila Beverly. She needs a new liver, pancreas, and bowel. The organizer of today's event knows just how important this mission is. He's a transplant survivor himself. There's a crisis in America. There's an organ shortage. And every hour, an American is dying because an organ's not becoming available. And that shouldn't be happening. There's literally hundreds of organs that are going to waste. That trek started last year in Alaska and will hit 300 cities around the world before ending in October of 2011. And a bill is up for debate. Didn't even make Winter weather hits Connecticut. What we can expect for tonight's commute. Plus, the torch of life comes to Hartford. Today is day 123 of its 700-day international journey. And how healthy are you? Up next on the Fox Connecticut News, the torch of life comes to Hartford. Today is day 123 of its 700-day international journey. Plus, how often do your kids... The extra mile for a good cause, the push to think about organ donation today to save a life down the road. Fox 61 and The Current, bringing you more local coverage. Now, the news at 10. Sobering statistics now about organ donation. 2006 numbers show more than 100,000 Americans are waiting for an organ transplant. Every year, 6,000 people die waiting. Well, the Connecticut DMV has been keeping track of donors since 1995. Since then, the good news is the numbers have been steadily rising. Then, more than 329,000 were listed on their driver's license as an organ donor. In 2008, that number was up to more than 936,000. Today, on the steps of the state capitol, some school kids provided the spark to help relay a message. More donors are needed. The torch of life made its way through Hartford today in hopes of raising awareness for org organ donations. Fox 61's Jim Altman shows us how it works. There's more than one torch getting attention this week. These 8th graders from St. Augustine's in Hartford are fired up for the cause at the Capitol. What's called the Torch of Life. We're telling people that it's good to donate to those who need the organs. Torch of Life is a, uh, our symbol to shine the light on the need for organ and tissue donation. Liver donor recipient and campaign founder George Marcello is traveling the country in the truck of life and recruiting school kids everywhere he goes. Donate your organs, let's go! The torch itself shines for lots of reasons. Pope John Paul II blessed that torch nine years ago and he proclaimed that organ and tissue donation was a genuine act of love and he encouraged me to pass the torch to the students. This is a two-year campaign which started in October. Already they've hit 75 cities and the truck back here has already logged 20,000 miles. We're actually going through 160 cities in the U.S. and uh, uh, we're going to be arriving in uh, San Diego on uh, April 28, 2011. And they say it's the steps they take here that will help down the road. We've got 105,000 people in the United States waiting for an organ transplant, life-saving organ transplant. And uh, in Connecticut alone, we've got about 1,100 people. Why not give, um, give the gift of life? We don't need millions of dollars to go in the laboratory to find a cure. The cure is in us. Sign your organ donor cards, everybody in Connecticut. In Hartford, Jim Altman, Fox 61 News. After its tour of the U.S., the torch will Argentina. To find out more about the Torch of Life, head to our website, ctnow.com. famous torch was blessed by Pope John Paul II back in 2000. It was lighted to pay tribute to organ and tissue donations. In West Hartford, street sweeping is scheduled to begin on Monday. <laughs>
and two crews will start with high traffic streets. And then Did you get it? Though? Yeah, I got all but the first couple of seconds of it. This news is everywhere, town by town. A local teenager carrying a special torch through the streets of downtown Pittsburgh today is called the Torch of Life. It's a symbol of a desperate need for both organ donations. And tonight, a 14 year old girl has been on that transplant list for more than five years carrying it. Amelia Beverly has a megawatt smile, but when it comes to her health, there's little for her to be happy about. For five agonizing years, she's been waiting for a new bowel, a new pancreas, and a new liver, enduring night after night of treatments that interrupt her sleep but keep her alive. It's a constant struggle because she wants to love a normal childhood body, and she can't. I'm waiting on three transplants, and I'm trying to get better. Today, Jamelia was asked to carry the torch of life, first blessed a decade ago by Pope John Paul, then carried worldwide to of the need for organ donors. Organizers say if just half the population became donors, waiting lists would disappear. And I think Pope John Paul II, when he said, through the kids, people respond, they have been responding. When they see uh, courageous kids like this carrying the torch, they respond to this. They become organ donors. I feel special because it's like it's like giving an opportunity to let the world know what what kids need out here. The torch began its current two-year journey in Alaska last October, and after stops in 300 cities and 36 countries, is going to arrive in Argentina late next year.乔治·马西罗是一位曾经接受器官捐赠而获得新生的加拿大公民。他于2000年开始为了呼吁更多人捐献器官接力传递生命火炬。去年开始的每周SOS之旅3月8号抵达了美国纽约市。请看详细报道
Perry Fox iniziava la sua Marathon of Hope per sensibilizzare tutti i canadesi alla lotta contro il cancro. Giorgio Marcello vuole promuovere la donazione di organi anche negli Stati Uniti, dove ben 106.000 persone sono in attesa di trapianto. Inspire half the population of the USA. If we can do that, uh, nobody needs to die every hour there. We can change that drastically. In Canada, oltre 4.000 persone sono in attesa di un organo che salvi loro la vita. You know, I was down in my last week of life when I had my transplant and uh, uh, my doctor told me I had less than a week to live and 20 minutes later my pager went off and uh, away I went and that was 15 years ago. Questa campagna durerà sino al 2014 e toccherà 200 paesi. Giorgio Mitolo, Omni News. Il Ministero della Sanità, le città a nord dell'Ontario sono le prime in tema di donazione di organi, mentre non si può dire lo stesso della GTE. North Bay, Port Perry e Sudbury sono in testa alla classifica per numero di abitanti che hanno dato il loro assenso alla donazione di organi. La media provinciale è al 17%, quella della GTA di poco superiore al 4%. Eppure molti si dicono pronti a iscriversi per la donazione. I'm already registered. Why you did it? To save somebody else, somebody's life? If uh, with my part, of, part of my body, somebody can survive or something like that. Yeah, why not? Per iscriversi alla lista dei potenziali donatori di organi bisogna avere un minimo di 16 anni ed essere in buone condizioni di salute, mentre non esiste un limite massimo d'età. Ciascun donatore, col suo gesto, può salvare sino a 8 vite umane. There are two ways that uh, people can register their consent to donate. One is um, in person by visiting the Service Ontario Health Card Office and the second way of registering is by downloading the Gift of Life consent form off of the TGLN website. Giorgio Marcello, promotore di numerose campagne per la donazione di organi, auspica che il processo della donazione venga semplificato, ad esempio attraverso il rinnovo della patente di guida. By going and getting your license, and there's many people that have to renew it, uh, you're going to be asked, do you want to be an organ donor? So that would be registered. They can do the right, you know, they can register more people that way. In Canada sono oltre 4.000 le persone in attesa di trapianto, 1.700 nel solo Ontario. Ma se la classifica per donatori in Ontario è aperta da località come North Bay con il 43,8%, seguita da Perry Sound con il 40%, ebbene tristemente al quarto ultimo posto è Woodbridge con soli 4 donatori.